Hi, my name is William Elmer, and I'm a member of the Computational Engineering Division at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. I'm here to talk to you today about SimRev, which is an enabling platform for design collaboration and rapid iteration and simulation revision. Now, non-recoverable engineering overhead is much too high. You have to take a rough order of magnitude cost approach, and then you have to take that number and multiply it by five for an example company with uh, about a 20% R&D budget, which is relatively high. Now, the reason this is is because engineers face a lot of hurdles to collaborating on a design and then being able to reuse some of that design process on other products in their product line. Now, if we had a way of optimizing resources and optimizing the design process or the way that simulations can be integrated into the design process, then we could encourage innovative development and we could do so from a number of multidisciplinary teams. So you might have a fluid problem, you might have a solid mechanics problem, and you're looking for a way to uh, allocate resources to retire risk in that problem. And what I'm going to talk about now is a way of integrating the analysis process into the risk retirement process. Now, if we have a product concept, SimRev would hope to lower the resources that it takes to come up with that initial process. If you have a number of decision points, SimRev is looking to move your decision points to the left in time and save uh, potential costs associated with redesign. Now, one of the ways that it does that is that it changes the design review process into a continuous deployment process. Uh, it widens the design review process to take up the majority of the risk retirement. So at its core, simulation revision is a Python library, which is useful for running Lawrence Livermore developed codes. Now these codes are things like AL3D, Paradigm, Nike 3D, and Diablo, and they can do solves of uh, fluid mechanics and solid mechanics. Uh, all of the analysis input is put into a Python source code, and that code can be tracked by a number of different tools. That code is also used to submit batch processes to massively parallel computers, and this changes the paradigm of the way that products are typically developed from one in which products are broken down into bite-sized pieces for individual engineers into one where all of the engineers on your design team are collaborating on one single uh, supercomputing simulation of your product. As you refine that product, the concept is tracked using revision management. And so you can begin answering questions like, if you have a rocket, is it going to fly? Will it be too heavy? If you have a capital intensive project, what's the cost going to be? And if you have consumer products, will those customers end up happy? So team concepts and individual concepts are now being evaluated by supercomputer simulation. And that takes a little bit of the guesswork out of the design and uh, uh, revision process. So if we can recast this design and analysis and testing loop as a software development loop, then we can use established practices that have been used for software management. So on the left side of this slide you can see existing tools, things for computer-aided design, things that mesh parts, and things that solve those parts. Uh, those pieces of software have been developed here for a number of years. The new piece of software, SimRev, provides a decision and an action framework which allows you to organize your system into part assemblies, assign material properties, have interfaces and boundary conditions on those things, and really provides a way for you to map the hardware development process to a software development process. Once you have software, you can apply enterprise management tools like Git, and the Atlassian suite of code development uh, tools where people can ask for features. Now these would be hardware features in this case. They can submit bug reports. Maybe there's something that's not being solved quite correctly. Uh, and maybe there's something where their uh, uh, cu customers won't be particularly happy. So commercial codes focus on the graphical user interface to improve individual workflow. But what they don't address is a way to collaborate with uh, other engineers across your design organization. So if you have a script, which is something that some graphical user interfaces will generate for you, 
you can change a few parameters, but if you get away from some of the uh, uh, core concepts of that script, you can change one small little detail and you'll have to run through the whole thing over again. By contrast, writing a computer program is a little bit like being a conductor. You get the resources that you need and then you exercise those resources and put the whole thing into process as a symphony. If you want to improve on a given section, on a given instrument, then you can do that independently of the other instruments. Other programming concepts which are very useful for the risk retirement phase of your project is object-oriented programming. This allows you to start with something somewhat general and then you don't have to throw away all of the work that you've done when you want to move to something more specific. You simply inherit everything that has been done on the more general piece already. By modularizing your process, uh, you can have individual teams working on the portion of the problem that is most in their technical capacity and then they can have a way of interfacing or sharing information which is very straightforward and version controlled so they're all on the same page. For the example we have here, we have a lunar lander and we have a support command module and both of those things have very different tasks but they have an interface through which they have to, uh, that, through which they have to act and we can formulize that, we can, we can make it a very formal process for your product development team. Another key feature from, uh, from the engineering process in software is unit testing. You can actually deploy various fixes to your individual units and then you can bring them together onto a very large supercomputing enabled simulation when the time is right. Now for requirements management, what that means is that you can separate your real actual customer requirements from the ones that are derived. And by having this very specific framework through which you can organize the product development process, you can make sure that you're not imposing any derived requirements that your product doesn't actually require, and you can make sure that you keep your margins as low as is practicable. So computational analysis and design in the future will become the biggest bottleneck to product development and risk management. Uh, by having this digital manufacturing process, by transforming the computer-aided design process into a computer-aided engineering process that is truly uh, foundational to the way that companies develop products, uh, companies that have very low R&D budgets will be able to afford NRE costs. And as you can produce virtual prototypes, you'll be able to reduce risk across your enterprise and grow the value of your business in a leveraged fashion. Another thing that's interesting is that in today's environment, small and agile software startups are the ones that are most likely to get funding and to attract talent. If you tell VCs that you're interested in developing hardware, it's a little bit harder to get a funding than if you tell them that you're interested in developing software. Well, if you can map the hardware development process into a software development process, and then through the virtue of physics-based computational simulation, you can make sure that that hardware you're building is going to work the first time you try it, then you can have a very agile and swiftly reacting business to your customer requirements. You'll be able to manage early decisions. We're going to rewrite the way that uh, risk management is done in a, a, a number of different industries. And if you think about one of the promises that uh, 3D printing has, if you can 3D print metal parts, you've now retired all of the schedule risk for manufacturing throughout the enterprise that you have. So if you can get real answers about the performance of that product from the very beginning and you can develop the engineering process in an integrated and distributed way, then you can really get to the core of some of the questions that you have and some of the solutions that you're looking to provide. And if you have any other questions, then you can please contact Charity Follett at the Livermore IPO. Thank you very much.